Hello you guys, so today I'm going to discuss about internal medicine training in the UK or IMT. IMT is a special training for those who want to become internal medicine consultant in the UK and it lasts about three years. It changed from co-medical training in August 2019 from two-year training to internal medical training. It is the special training for physicians and currently the new curriculum has included that all doctors who want to become medical registrar need to have experience in the ITU or intensive care unit geriatrics and also outpatients. They include ITU rotation in the second year of the IMT. In 2020, uh, medicine is the most popular specialty in the UK which is the highest about 26.7% followed by surgical training and then the third is the anesthetics training and actually the highest number of doctors uh, in the age bracket is around 30 to 39 um, because this is the age where most doctors are in the specialty training stage and on average uh, it takes around 10 years to become a medical consultant during the IMT, normally you would have four to six months placement in each of the medical specialties and the purpose is to immerse yourself in all the different specialties, also participating in the medical on calls. And now that we normally have a weekly teaching for once a month, kind of monthly teaching for all the trainees in one region, for example, a day of teaching in, um, in a part of North Wales. So all trainees from central, east and west of North Wales all gather around in one area to have the teaching although now that's COVID it's currently being held online every six months we will have to pass all the work-based placement assessment and also during this three-year training we will be expected to complete and pass our MRCP all components of the MRCP if we haven't passed the MRCP sometimes uh, some people uh, do extend the training to pass the exams the application is done via Oriel. I will put the link down below for the website to check on the dates. There's two rounds in a year, but I think currently with the current pandemic, they have announced that round one was open in November and closes in December. And they at that time, they announced saying that they are not sure whether they're doing, going to open round two. However, recently they have announced that round two is not going to open because of the number of applicants for the IMT. The first criteria is the eligibility. So for UK graduates, normally after completing the two years foundation program. For non-UK graduates, then this is the where CREST form comes in. So CREST form, which is a form signed by the supervising consultant during the work in the UK, and this would be sufficient. And also they have a special criteria for refugees. I don't think refugees need the CREST form. Finally, during the application, list down all the medical experience uh, before entering the IMT. So basically from medical school up to now. You will also have to provide three references from three referees. So basically, normally we just have to list the details of the three referees and then once the application has been submitted, they will contact the referees themselves. One must be the educational supervisor and the other two is anyone that we've worked with recently. During the application process, we will have to self-score our application and this score will be checked during the interview. So make sure that when we score ourselves, um, just make sure that you score it properly because it will be checked during the interview. The first score is undergraduate training. Basically, if you have another degree during undergraduate training, then you will score points. Second is postgraduate. If you have obtained another degree postgraduate, then you will score some points as well. Prizes slash awards. Prizes or awards during undergraduate, during work, you know, postgraduate, then it will come under here. And the marks differs from according to national level, local, region. It also includes people who have received honours in their degree. So have a look in the transcript of your medical certificate. Uh, some people have scored easily if they've got like honours during their medical school. Next is presentations. If you have presented in national level or any level at all, then you would include here. And however, this does not include the quality improvement project. Some example of presentations will be like poster presentation in London or something like that in a kind of conference. If you would like to score some points then this is the time to talk 
to the supervisor i'm sure there, there's always a lot of cases around in the hospital that you can present you can next is publications if you have published in any journals then you can put it in here this is the first and second author count if you are interested in getting published then definitely talk to the supervisor before applying teaching so even if you have organized or if you're involved in teaching definitely get the feedback forms this is easy because everybody has to do teaching at some point if you want to score more points then definitely organize the teaching program like for medical students then do that for three months or so that will definitely score a big point next is quality improvement so quality improvement slash audits you will score points if you are involved in the audit or quality improvement project and higher points are scored if you actually organize the quality improvement project complete the cycle now this is the easiest thing to score 10 points and lastly leadership skills so any leadership experience that you have in committees on the hospital or anything outside the hospital then include it in here and you can score some points and if you don't have then just do some course and you can score a small point here there is a section at the end where IMT applicants have to kind of write a paragraph similar to personal statement so to write a few words discussing about why you are interested in the medicine and also to uh, support the application in the previous years because of the COVID, they have looked at this particular thing and score marks based on this so definitely put a bit of effort into this to uh, make your application stand out so take time to uh, think about why you want to do medicine what drives you to do medicine you know medical training mention anything that will make the medical consultant the interviewers wants to pick you to be in the IMT the application initially it will be long listed so basically anyone who doesn't meet eligibility will be remove and then after that you will be shortlisted for the interview based on the scores after the interviews obviously you will receive offers now IMT is quite competitive uh, there's only limited amount of numbers training posts available in the UK well 2020 2021 uh, competition is kind of two to one so two people are competing for one training post so definitely if you are interested in the IMT then make use of the scoring and prepare yourself now to to make your application stand out so do posters application leadership you know quality improvement project so all these things you can actually prepare for the application and score it for now and obviously passing the first part of mrcp is definitely a good supportive evidence um, showing that you are definitely committed to the medical specialty with regards to interview currently it is being held online and they have four sections so the first is a clinical scenario and patient handover so the first three minutes they will give you a scenario you will be asked questions regarding the scenario such as what steps you're gonna take differentials investigations management plan this will last eight minutes and then so you will have to spend one minute like doing handover to your colleague so here in this station there's two marks one mark is for the management of the scenario and then another mark is for the handover so you have to make sure that you can relay the ability in a clear concise way the second is a uh, ethical scenario in this station they will give you a ethical scenario and then you will have to discuss what ethical issues arises around this scenario and how you would approach them so you will be assessed according to your responses and also your knowledge about the ethical issues and this station lasts about five minutes and then the second half of the interview will be uh, focused on the suitability and commitment to the training and this is when they will ask you about the information that you've provided in the application form i presume this is when they will check the scoring as well you may be asked about interest outside of medicine so this lasts about three minutes and then the next is just focusing on the application and training and what achievements that you've had after three minutes and then you will be asked to leave the room so obviously currently all of this is being held online and they will score you one to five they will score you according to the level expected of uh, fy2 so after the interview then you will be invited to rank program preferences so basically put your first choice whichever specialty or place that you're happy to go to if any places that you're you don't want to do or any specialties that you're not interested then don't put put in the you know select a preferred program and once you've received the offer there's three options you can accept the offer straight away or hold the offer while you're waiting for the answers from other specialties 
and also decline the offer now a lot of people they tend to apply for a lot of different specialties we don't normally just apply one specialty like i myself i applied for imt and also i applied for anesthetics if you have two offers then obviously you can make the best choice you can also hold with upgrades so for example if you want this specific place or this specific specialty and if you can just hold until the end of the holding period and if there is spaces available in that particular post then your offer will be automatically upgraded to your preferred choice so my experience and thoughts so basically i myself i did a comical training uh, in august 2017 and i completed in august 2020 the reason why is because i had maternity leave uh, one year <laughs> in between the training i completed my mrcp during the uh, comical training during my ct2 my second year of comical training before going into maternity leave so basically I enjoy truly uh, my AMT. It is a very busy training. What I did was I had geriatric rotation for my first one and then endocrine and then respiratory and then gastro and then I went on maternity leave and then when I came back I did acute medicine. Initially geriatrics was okay, it was not too busy and then going up to endocrine busier and the respiratory was the busiest and then gastro and acute medicine was very busy the on calls always busy obviously we have to participate in all the on calls you know when you're in medical on call you are the crash team basically i've been involved in a lot of crash calls a lot of cardiac arrest very arrest all the emergencies basically i changed my decision at the end of my imt during my maternity leave i decided that i want to go into general practice so that's what i did but truthfully uh, i enjoy my hospital job i mean i just don't like the on calls the nights the weekends i mean if it were me i would be happy to do medical jobs without the on calls uh, without the weekends and without the nights and that would be a perfect job unfortunately that's not the case after the imt then you will have to apply again to your uh, specialty of choice cardiology respiratory whatever you choose, dermatology, they're all competitive. All these specialties are competitive. There's only limited numbers of training posts available. So the next stage of the specialty training will last about three, four years. That's why I said on average, it lasts about 10 years to become medical consultant, two years foundation program, three years IMT, and then four years or to CCT, so basically to finish the specialty training. And obviously there's exams in the middle. Sometimes people extend their training um, during the IMT because they haven't passed the MRCP because the job is busy itself. And in on top of that, you have to do work-based place assessment. You have to pass the MRCP. But I learned so much, very high learning curve. You will get used to it very, very quickly. But it's very useful. I've had the experience. It will definitely make me a better doctor, make me a better GP. Will I go back to medical? Well, the reason reason why I did IMT is because I wanted to become a dermatologist. I applied once, dermatology, I didn't get it. I didn't have publication, so obviously my score was not that high for the application. But now that I'm thinking, I mean, it is still an option. A lot of people have graduated GP and <laughs> become something else as well, like psychiatrists or any other specialty. So it's not kind of a closed book, but I enjoy my current GP post. No weekends, no nights, no on calls, no crash calls. It's... I mean, you have to choose what you want in life. Obviously, I've got a family, got two children. It's very busy. It's difficult to, you know, become a registrar at the same time and also have a very busy family. So GP suits me better. But obviously, dermatology is nice as well. So I still like dermatology. Maybe I would apply it in future. I don't know. Hopefully, you find this helpful. Uh, I have some videos on how to pass MRCPA exam. So have a look here. See you then. Bye.